Twiner Army. Is the video going to start? What's up, Twiner Army? Here comes the video for today. Um, sorry, I haven't been posting schoolwork and stuff. But today we're going to be reacting to scary stuff since it is Halloween all this month. Yes. Now I'm going to be inside a haunted house, so I need to watch this just to know what I have to do. Oh, it's not. There's a bunch of my friends in there. Nice touch. I actually like that with the uh, ball, with the um, pit balls and stuff. Okay, so now we're out of the bouncy balls. Whoa. Okay, there's a little bit too much of that. Okay, that's making the head hurt. Uh, is that a dummy? Uh, that's a dummy. Hey! Holy snap, you came out of nowhere. Oh, the god, this is CU, you're not scared at all. Either way, it's going to be bad. What the heck? Oh, she's going like this. going like that. They're not done. That can't be the end. That cannot be the end. Dude, with that much fog, I'd be... Dude, I'd be scaring some people with that. Um, okay. Looks like we've got some explanation to do. Jansen, you have not been posting in two weeks. Yes, I know. It's because I had back-to-back -back essays. I had back-to-back -back, uh, tests. I had a lot of stuff to do. Because, guys, I, been, I can't be getting Fs. You know that I can't be doing that because I'm in sports. Also, by the way, I'm going to be making my own highlight reel in football soon. When the football season ends, I will. Oh, snap. And we're going to make some more videos of, uh, three, two more videos of Haunted House videos after we're going to end the video. Um, Yeah, I'm thinking I might just be doing, I might be waiting one week. I'll try to post, I'll try to hurry up and post, like, for four days. If I can, I will. If I don't, and, I, and uh, if it takes too long, guys, that's me doing my schoolwork. I'm so sorry. Uh, I tried to post a lot, and the only day, and I had to do those essays over the weekend, so I couldn't do it. And after I had to learn, I had football practice and stuff, this and that. I have to work on the schedule here. 
Holy smokes. Then after I have talented drama to go to. So, yeah. I've been working on stuff back to back. I'm so sorry, guys. That's why I'm tired right now. Mm. So, yeah. We're going to get another video of a haunted house. So, guys. I thought There's of this instead. Let's go look up some urban legend, legends of Halloween. We consider urban legends and I just stumbled upon this one. So, let's do it. Aren't true and can happen to us, right? Well, we're going to be the bearer of some interesting news. Oh, With every legend, there is an element of truth. Hola! Did you hear about our latest addition to our family? The richest Espanol is the perfect place for all you native Spanish speakers out there. Don't speak Spanish? No problem. Come on over. This is the perfect place to practice. Amazing facts, interesting people, and funny pictures. Check out the richest Espanol today. Haunted Doll Ah, dolls. They're cute, they make good cuddle buddies, and they're endearing companions. But then we have an urban legend that just ruins our playtime fun. Despite what movies say, dolls can't really come to life to Yacht. terrorize you, can they? Well, in Key West, Florida, there is a haunted doll named Robert sitting in a museum. Uh -oh. In the early 1900s, up, a young boy was gifted the doll that was apparently given a voodoo curse by the maid. The doll reportedly came alive and would move all over the place. It's also reported that if you try to take a picture of Robert the doll without his permission, your photo will turn out all messed up. Vanishing Hitchhiker to be fair, it seems that every city has its story about a vanishing hitchhiker. Stories include specific streets as well as details about the hitchhiker in question. People included have been teenage girls seeking a ride to prom, a mother looking for her children, or a man trying to get home. When the driver lends a hand and tries to get to know the rider, they disappear. There are enough stories floating around these days that make many believe this is a real phenomenon, especially on Halloween. Bad Candy <laughs> this next story is more physical than supernatural. Remember how your parents needed to check your candy after trick-or-treating? This urban legend sprang up in the 70s after media outlets were reporting that people were putting substances in candy and giving it to children, or even sticking pins and needles inside the goodies. Of course, this would ruin everyone's Halloween. If you're thinking this urban legend was just a way for your parents to have access to your candy, this myth is very much reality. Spider Wig Considered to be one of the most classic urban legends, this spider wig tale may seem out of the ordinary. A girl goes out to her grandmother's attic looking for a costume. She finds a witchy looking wig and puts it on. Later at a Halloween party, her scalp gets really itchy and it turns out that thousands of spiders have been living on her scalp thanks to the wig. While this may seem like less of a possibility, there have been stories of bugs taking up residence in buns as well as weaves. And then there's always lice. Still want to wear a wig? Nope. <laughs> Bunny man. Sure, when you hear the words bunny man, you might think of a fun Easter tradition of a man dressing up for Easter. And yet, with all Halloween urban legends, this one definitely takes a darker turn. This urban legend starts off with the closing of a prison. While the crazy inmates are being transported, one escapes and wreaks havoc in the community. Then, that inmate's ghost haunts a local bridge every Halloween. This legend is based on an actual story from Fairfax County, Virginia, where a similar situation happened in the 1970s. The Mummy. Holy snap. Blue Star Tattoos. Children of the 70s and 80s probably remember their parents freaking out about temporary tattoos. Not that these little tattoos would be the getaway to a life of getting inked up, but at one time there were people sticking blue star temporary tattoos in treat bags. What was wrong with these tattoos? Well, apparently they were laced with substances, if you know what we mean. While that legend turned out to be untrue, there are special stickers out there that apparently can accomplish that certain job of gaining elevation call from inside in the early 1960s a truly scary urban legend came about where a babysitter was alone in a family's home while the children slept then she would start getting phone calls asking if she had checked on the children after a series of scary threats and such it is discovered that the call was coming from inside the house however the true version of this story happened in 1950 after an intruder broke into a home while the babysitter was there the hands resist him. 
So you can't look at this painting and say this is one you'd want hanging in your bedroom or living room. Maybe it's a good hallway painting, those creepy eyes watching you as you walk. Ugh. Anyways, a haunted painting is a popular legend around Halloween time, and it's based on a true story. This painting was made by Bill Stoneham in 1972, and it seems that with every owner the painting had, something bad would happen to them. Stoneham made the painting based on his life as an adopted child, and there are some creepy cues throughout the piece. Take a look for yourself. The Clowns this is one urban legend we can all say oh, is actually oh, true. Clowns are very unsettling for some people, especially for those who recently saw the remake of It. But in the fall of 2016, mm -hmm. all over the United States, clowns were spotted just standing there and menacingly looking at people or security cameras. This resulted in lots of calls to the police and even some frightening confrontations for those who were brave enough to approach the clowns. While this clown panic of 2016 is best known to us, these sightings have been happening for decades and yet we seem to forget about them. Thanks for joining us. Which urban legend gave you the willies? Tell us in the comments. Got any more creepy ones to share with us? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you're wanting more goodies, check out these other amazing videos from The Richest. All right. We're going to still... I'm going to see a story in the next video. Or maybe that... Or we'll probably try to call some numbers. Isn't this curious? Now, I'm going to be doing this every time after a video. So, we're going to do a story. Not just any story. A scary story. So anyway, this is in October. I want to say we were off from school. This is, we were off for Monday and Friday. So we all decided we were going to go sleep over at a friend's house for the next four days. Except for Monday. We would have to go home in the afternoon and stuff. So anyway, we decided we were going to sleep at my friend's house. Now, I had three friends coming. Exotic Beast. And um, two other friends that you guys don't know about. And that I'm going to keep a secret. So anyway, their names are Josh and... <laughs> Josh and hmm, Blake. So we all decided we were going to go sleep over at Blake's house, right? And so we got this stupid idea because we heard about clowns and everything. And yes, it was that era. Clowns were just now being a big thing. So we decided we were going to walk outside at night and try to find one. So, yeah, that was our plan at night. And so we started, we were walking, 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 and this was all pitch black night. We all had flashlights. And little did we know, we found a clown. As you already know, my friends and I decided to taunt this clown because we didn't know that he was actually going to run after us. Boy, were we wrong. My friend Blake said this. Oh, you think clowns are scary? Go work at a children's party. And this and that. The clown. And he said, I escaped from a psycho asylum. And now you're my next victim. <laughs> as he laughed and as he ran after us, we all ran in fear. We ran, we ran, we ran. We're trying to go back at Blake's house. We forgot we were lost. And Blake had a phone. We Ego Beast had a phone. My friend Josh had a phone, except for me and my brother. So anyway, we ran, and we all called the cops. 
But did we know that this clown had other friends? As we ran past the ditch, we decided we were going to hide in there. Since we were wearing nothing but black, we knew that they could not see us. So we were hiding in this ditch and I heard a chuckle and a laugh walking right past me. I heard breathing going on. It was it was my brother. I covered his mouth. And I told him to shh as he walked past us. This man was creepy. Creepier in a way. He was kind of like Pennywise, but different. Way different. This guy cannot go into any shape or form. He was he was just a guy that had a big bat that would have blood all over it. And so after that. Josh runs. The clown chase, chases after him. Me, Blake, Ego Beast, my brother ran. But then Ego Beast said, We cannot leave Josh. We have to go back for him. Josh, we ran all the way back. Josh cowered in front of a door as the clown moved forward and forward. I'm gonna enjoy you dying. Josh screams and cries no as Ego Beast runs, tackles the clown, and he tells him to leave my friend alone. After that, me and Blake and my brother pick up Josh as we notice he just twisted his ankle. We help him up and we start running, 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 and running. Eagle Beast got up and he started running too. He helped us with uh, Josh. Now, let me just tell you this. Josh is one of the best football players on the team. He can run fast and stuff, but his foot was twisted. And me and my brother were on the football team too. My friend Blake was on the uh, baseball team. And but he didn't go to the same school as us. My mom and his mom were just friends and stuff. Anyway, back to the story. So, um, yeah. So anyway, we pick up Josh. Josh is freaking out at this point, screaming not to let the clown get him. And as we see this, see this, we tell him to call the cops while we are carrying him. Because we're literally, we, we were literally lifting this dude up like he was a queen or something. And he didn't, he wasn't moving as fast. We were literally picking him up on our shoulders and we just started running. So, he called the police. But, little did we know, we were in the woods and there was no cell. There was no service. And as we knew this, we heard footsteps. As we heard this, we thought to ourselves, we're going to die here. But Blake had a plan. He covered us in leaves. And then he hid behind a tree. But little did we know, the clown found Blake. And then it took him into a van and drove off. And we were worried about Blake. So, I got up and I grabbed, Ego Beast gave me his phone. I grabbed Ego Beast's phone. I got up and I jumped onto the van as it was moving. Now, Blake was screaming, crying for him to let him go. Now, he, this dude was going really, really fast. 
I could barely hold on. I got a call. It was from Josh's phone. I called him up. I answered. They were asking me, and they said, Is he okay? Where are you guys going? And it was an abandoned house. I hid underneath the van after once he stopped. I heard footsteps going to the back of the van as Blake screamed with all of his might and as the clown grabbed them brought them into the warehouse now as you pictured I walk in there I hear screams echoing around this abandoned place there's no cell phone service there's nothing so, I knew how to drive. So did Blake. So did Josh. So did my brother. Ego Beast did not. I'm not gonna say what age we were. Because I think that that would be wrong. So, anyway. This clown has a hang of keys. He, he hung up his keys right there. So, I grabbed the keys. And I put it in my pocket. And the clown noticed that his keys were gone. As of this, he starts laughing as he grabs a full-on machete. Waving it around, saying, You'll have to wait. I need to find my keys. Blake starts screaming for help. But... The clown puts tape over his mouth. As this, I call up Josh's phone. And they said that they found the warehouse. And they said that they were coming. I grabbed a knife, untied Blake from his, from his hands to his feet. Then I took off the tape. But little do you know, this clown came out of nowhere with a chainsaw, waving it around like a crazy maniac. And then after that, me and Blake ran outside. Josh, Ego Beast, and my brother were holding up Josh. And so I unlocked the van, grabbed it. Then I started up, put it in reverse. We drove out of there. Now, this van had front seats and back seats. But it had a backpack. Then, after, we see it. Blake said that there was five body bags in the back. Because Ego B smelled something coming from back there. And as we did, we seen a hand pop out. So, anyway. We kept on driving as the hand went down for a rest. We kept on driving. Suddenly out of nowhere, this clown figured out where we were going. I kept on driving and driving and driving, every single engine crushing on twigs everywhere. So I don't know where I seen the clown. He popped up in front. Eagle Beast told me to ram him, and I said, I'm not about to kill someone. So, I pressed the brakes, and I put it in reverse. He came up with the chainsaw, and he started trying at the engine. So, after that, I turned off, and I locked the doors. And I knew one thing. This guy was not about to ruin his van. This might have been his only vehicle for him to travel in. So we were just waiting there as we heard chuckles and walking. I waited for him to get behind this and take off. After that, he broke the window up in the front seat, right in the driver's seat where I was driving. Turned on the engine, 
and I went. We were going about 60 miles an hour. We are going really, really fast. Suddenly, I don't know where. There was a lake right in front of us. I hit the brakes, couldn't reverse, turned around, seen another angle, went for it. We were in a highway after that. This clown found a car. And as we went, this car came out of nowhere. The clown grabbed the person out of there. Started chawing this dude's hair, head off. After that, my brother threw up. Josh was crying, saying that we were going to die. I went and I ran. As we knew, he had a car too. This clown was driving as fast as he could, ramming the ramming the van back and forth. In Solano, where we seen one bar of service. But after that, we heard sirens as a cop drove up right by us and this clown drove into the woods as the cop as we, as we pulled over the cop was asking who was the guy in the other car and we were praying him saying that we need to get home and as that he went go out the warehouse they didn't find a clown they didn't find nothing After that, we all decided we were never going to go out at night again and search for another clown. Blake's parents were mad. My parents were mad. Ego the Beast's parents were mad. Um, Josh's parents were mad, too. We were basically... But they said we could still sleep over. But we are going to have a lot of chores to do. My parents and them asked cop what was in the bags he said it was chopped up off pieces of five missing people one survived out of all of them him telling a story of a clown in his room hiding in the dark this clown would hide in closets he said and he would come We were all thankful that we were not those guys. And we were lucky enough to save a person with only one leg and one arm. This man would call us his heroes, but we thought we were just doing childish things. Now, I hope you guys don't get no nightmares. See you next time, Twinder Army.